Hey, so today we'll start the Vim series. We'll in the series, I'll tell you how uh, what the Vim is, why is it the best text editor ever written, what are the benefits, how to use it, what are the modes, what are the commands, and today we'll start just with the movements. I'll tell you about ever everything about the movements in Vim and the modes. I will be using the screen keys program so you can see what I type. And I open my terminal and I advise you to re read the man page, man manual page for Vim. It's quite good and extensive. And I also advise you to do something called Vim Tutor. Now Vim Tutor is not a documentation per se, but it's just it's an official tutorial on how to use Vim. It takes about 30 minutes to complete it. It's a series of tasks that will take you through the basic commands and editation. And I advise you to do it for a week every day. So you already get the idea of how to use them comfortably, how to get it into your mind. So you don't need to think about using them. So I have a little file, which I will demonstrate the modes and movements on uh, modes and movements will be the first uh, episode. Yeah, so I'll go to my documents quickly. And I will use Vim, and as a parameter, I will use the file I want to edit. So neon.css, which is a CSS file. Uh, yeah, this is just because I have a swap file, which means uh, I, I already edited it, and it's not saved yet, so I just use edit anyway. So whatever, this is how the file that you open with Vim will look like. Now, this is colored formatted because I have, set, I have Vim set up to auto detect the file and style it accordingly. Now, there are many different modes in Vim, but uh, the most important ones you need to know about now is normal mode, insert mode, and command line mode. There is also uh, visual select and X mode, but I don't need to talk about them now. Now, normal mode is for navigation and manipulation of text. And this is the mode that Vim will start in by default. And this is the mode you will get into when you press escape while being in other modes. In a normal mode, the default one, when you open the program, you anything you will uh, type on a keyboard will serve as a shortcut for a command of Vim. So, I will go through basic movements and key binding for the movements in this episode. And the next episode, we will do some uh, inserting text and modif modifying it. But now we'll just learn how to navigate in the file. So, you can use arrow keys, but no one really does that because it's so much slower from. Uh, or opposed to staying with your hands on uh, a home row. If you place your hands on the keyboard, naturally, you will get uh, you will get your fingers onto the F and J keys. This is the natural position your hands are rested on the home row. Now, the basic navigation instead of arrow keys in Vim is H, J, K, and L. The four letters that are on the very right of the home row keys on the keyboard. So, J will take me down. And you can see it jumps from left to right because uh, here, this is the last character of this line. So, it goes here. But if I just press J another time, it's here. And now J is here because I have placed it on the second character of the line. See, it goes through, if there is a second character, it goes through it the same as I would do with arrow keys. See, now J go down, K up, L to the right and H to the left. It takes some time before you grasp, grasp this concept, but further on, it is the fastest way how to navigate. The file. So H, A, K, L are the basic uh, one character movements on the keyboard. Now, 
let's go on to words. You can press W to get to the beginning of a next word. And by default, a word is also a special character. So now I'm on a hyphen. If I press W now, I'll get to the W of the word with, like this. Now if I press W again, I got to the semicolon, or colon, and now 6. If I go back with H, and I would press the uppercase W, I would result on the 6 here, because uppercase W omits the special characters, and it takes the this whole string is just one word. If I press W now again, I'm on a margin because I was here and the next word actually starts after the white space or in this case, new line. So W again will jump to the O and now to the auto. So W, either lowercase or uppercase, goes forward a word and will put the cursor at the beginning of next word. E does the same thing, but it will get you, instead of to the beginning of the next word, to the end of the next word, like this. Also, with the uppercase E, uh, doing the same thing with special characters. B is short for back, so doing the same thing, also special characterized. So, this was, uh, if I go W forward, B backwards, I'm at the A. But if I go W forward and uppercase B, I'm at the T, because it takes the whole string without the white space as a one word. So W forward the word, E forward the word to the end of it, B back word. If you are on a bracket, it doesn't matter if it's a normal bracket, square bracket, curl bracket, I'm here, at, this one is the one I'm at, and this one highlighted is just uh, my special customization of Vim. The, the syntax just highlights the next, uh, the pairing, pairing bracket. But if I'm on, on the, if my cursor is on a bracket and I press the person key, the position of cursor changes to the corresponding uh, matching bracket. And it can be any bracket of uh, your choice. It will quickly jump to the to the closing or uh, starting one. It's very comfortable and very handy. Now another movement I want to, to teach you is the start the end and end of the file uh, line. So if I press zero, I'm at the very first character of the line, and if I press dollar sign. I'm at the very end character of uh, at the, at the very last character of line. As you can see here, that's just because I have some white spaces here. If I would do it, let's say here, I would go somewhere in the middle, so you can see it. And so if I press dollar sign, I'm here, zero here. I can also use G. If I press G and then G again. If I just pressed it once, it now waits in the buffer here for me to tell it some uh, more commands or more attributes so it knows what to do. If I press G again, so GG, it would take me to the beginning of a file. If I press just one capital G, it will get me onto the end of the file. And if I use it with the combination of number, let's say 7G, gets me the cursor to the seventh line of the file. Now another cool and handy uh, movement is using F and T and their uppercase variants to jump to the next occurrence of a character. Now what I mean by this is I'm here, let's say on the body, and if I press F, it's again in the buffer waiting for my command, and if I press M, now, it will find the next closest occurrence of the character M and move the cursor there. So if I would press it, it, would, it should get me here. So I'm here. That was lowercase f and a character. So if, again, if I do f and say 1, I should be here. 
like that. Now, if I would just swap the lowercase, uppercase, it would just search for the occurrences backwards. So, uppercase F and B, and I'm here. It goes back characters from the file. Now, this was F and F, but now the T and the uppercase T does the very same thing, but it will jump bef just right before the next or previous occurrence. So if I do T and M, instead of jumping on the M, it would get me before it. And if the command is just like this, uh, the difference between F and T is so minor that I just generally use only F, because F for me stands for find and it's just much simpler to use it. So this was uh, next occurrence or previous occurrence with F. And actually if you use F and I now, let's say do A, I'm on main here, I can now repeat it and it should jump here. And instead of typing it again, I can just pray, I can just press this can get the next occurrences on the same line. Now if I would if I would press this, I would get back the next occurrence. So this is handy. And there are a few more movements with a control and that is moving the screen. You can move the screen with control and F to move the screen one half of the screen forward. So this will scroll one half of the page down. F for forward and B for backwards. Or D for down a half a screen. So if I press D now, the body should be here. If I press it now, the, the content of the snap should be here. So D down a half page and you up a half a page. So these were the movements. We can repeat all of them with number preceding them. So let's say 7L, move me seven characters to the light, right. If I, let's say, would want to say 7FE, it would do nothing because the F meaning the finding the occurrence works just on the line like this. Well, I can repeat it with, let's say, I don't know, 4E, which would go four words forward and at their end, or 7B, seven words back. These were all movements. And the next episode will use commands for editing and I'll tell you how you can combine them with the movements we just learned because that's the true power of Wim. So just a little sneak peek here. I can do stuff like D, W, and it will combine the command D, which stands for delete, and the movement W, which stands for word. And I can even do things like D, A, E, which would delete eight next words and got me to the end of the next one. I can also do, or we'll teach you about stuff like D, A, P, which would delete everything around the current, par current paragraph. So if you are interested in all these cool movements and stuff, Stay tuned for the next episode. So see you.